it's the Nuka Cola Lounge, presented by the Triple S League. Nuka Cola was a popular drink in the pre war era and still is today. All right, hey everybody, welcome to the Triple S Podcast. My name is Ashen Inity, and I'm here with Subsidian. Hello. Those would be the good option and the ugly option, not saying which is which. We also have the bad option. Hey! How's it going, sir? Thanks for having me back. We really enjoyed your, your conversation uh, with us uh, two weeks ago. We're just going to pretend last week didn't happen. And uh, <laughs> now we're now it's this week. All right. So we have got some news about uh, Fallout New Vegas 2. A uh, little rumor that's been floating around. We have some information for you coming up later on in the podcast. But we were just talking, though, about you said you had watched uh, Santa Clarita Diet. Yeah, yeah. I, I binged that no, thing. No spoilers. No spoilers. No, spoilers. no, no. Um, but I, I was intrigued because I, from the trailers, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if it was a comedy. I didn't know if it was a drama, a horror. They branded as a horror on Netflix, and there was nothing scary about it. Gross and disgusting, for sure. But no <laughs> scares. It, it was Adam's Family meets Breaking Bad. That's the only way I know how to describe it. Anyways, if you're a Netflix subscriber, subscriber, hey, hey, um, go check it out. That's all I can say about that. It starts a little slow. I guess I can say more. <laughs> Does it count as uh... but, but you you genuinely found it uh, entertaining. Though. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. It's very clear. We're, we're not... It's, we're, we're not being sponsored by them, so I wouldn't throw no. them a freebie unless it was actually good. So... <laughs> I'm just uh, just saying Netflix. Yeah, I was just curious. About, yeah, that, <laughs> hint, wink, hint, wink. nudge, nudge. Yeah, I was just curious about it because I, I've been seeing ads for it everywhere. And uh, just, I don't know, even the ads turned my stomach. This, the whole cannibalism thing just... Yeah, just, uh, and they went full-blown with that. Oh, if you so, have a queasy stomach. So, Ash. Yeah. So, Ash, does are you saying that it leaves a... Uh, a bad taste in your mouth. <laughs> Maybe you should stop eating that particular brand of person. I don't know. <laughs> well, I've always had a thing for Italian. Um, so <laughs> the oh, speaking of that, no spoilers here. But uh, the spaghetti is prepared. The noodles are striated bicep, and the meatballs are made with something I found in the chest cavity. So this yeah, is just this is just <laughs> oh, so nasty. Oh, it's great. It's giving me the, the Wileys. Wileys? <laughs> Willies? Wiley Coyotes. Wiley, that's from that's from Mega Man. Meep meep. Does it count as a spoiler if I just ask about the general premise, or should I ask you about that like when we're not recording? No, it wouldn't be a spoiler. Like think. what what where does so this main character she's like a zombie, but not? Yeah. She just turns undead all of a sudden. It's very, very sudden. And it's but she's like she's like why. lucid and like oh for sure yeah. intelligent and stuff not like your typical yeah she has no pulse she's cold and her blood is black but she is very much still alive talking coherent moving not shuffling um she is a, a wife and a mom still but she's they describe it as driven by her id when she becomes undead so everybody who gets inflicted with this zombie disease is a little bit different. Some are hmm. more sexually charged and driven to eat. Some are, like, musically talented and they really want to pursue that part of their life. It's it's kind of interesting. It's a very different take on it, and I enjoyed it. And it, and it works, hey? So it, it does. It's not warm bodies, nor is it The Walking Dead. And it's not, it's not dead like me either, right? Mmm... Maybe a little. A little, little, little bit like it. Okay, all right. Well, anyways, um, one show that I am looking forward to immensely from the amazing people there at Netflix is the new Marvel. Yeah, show. baby! Mm. <clears throat> new trailer dropped for it uh, during the, what, the Super Bowl, was it? Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. I haven't heard about this. What, what, so what is it? It's the, it's the continuation of the uh, of the four that they're doing there. It's oh, Iron uh, Fist, baby! Iron, Iron Fist, and then you got, you, of course, you had... Uh, uh, Daredevil and J Jessica, and then um, Luke Cage. Luke Cage, which was my favorite one so far. Okay. Um, and yeah, so now now it's Iron Fist's turn, and then we're gonna have a full season of all four of them working together, possibly, and more more seasons as you know, depending on whether it's uh, successful or not. Apparently, it's been very successful. Okay. Um, 
some people have said, oh, the numbers aren't that great, or, you know, people aren't talking about it as much, but it's good enough that, that Netflix has been full-heartedly pursuing this forward, and a lot of, like, I'd say reasonable Marvel fans are are very happy with the direction that these stories have gone so far. Yes. Uh, so that that's a good thing. They learned a lot from the first season of Daredevil, enough to carry the other two so far, mm-hmm. and now three, the trailers look great. And it comes out March 17th. It's confirmed. It's no longer coming soon. Mm-hmm. It's like in a month and ten days. I'm super excited. I thought that uh, Punisher was supposed to get his own spinoff. Or is that? I've, is he? I've just, heard. I've heard that. I haven't. I haven't looked it up specifically, but it, uh, he was a very popular character. Yeah. And so I wouldn't put it past him. He he really hit it off with fans. I definitely think that he did a, an amazing job with the character. The um, the guy who acted that out. Um, he's from The Walking Dead. The yes. Walking Dead guy. Um, <laughs> his name <laughs> is evading Fury. me now. I don't know him yeah. either. Yeah. No, he's he's a good actor, and I really I really did like him in this role. I thought. It was much more up his alley. He's, uh, you know, he's a scary looking guy sometimes, but I never, I never liked him as the villain. So <clears throat> having him kind of play the, the anti-hero heroes, uh, or you know, the guy on the gray line, I think that's much better than than him on, you know, just the one far side or something like yeah. that. So John Barenthal, by the way. Yes. That's yes. The, yes. That's the actor's name, John Barenthal. I can, I can never remember his last name. <laughs> yeah. I am, um, and I, it was nice. I really liked him as the Punisher. I mean, after what, after, uh, you know, two seasons of The Walking Dead and just hating his guts, it was nice to, to be able to cheer for him in a role, so. But he was a little bit hateable in, as Punisher, too, which was cool. Yeah, he yeah, really, he's that, they he's really contrasted gray... him against Daredevil. Yeah, they played with that line of, like, which approach, you know, is the right one to take. Yeah. And can these two guys work together? He's very much an anti-hero. Yeah, I mean, this kind of vigilante justice uh, really belongs in fiction. I mean, you could apply that to all of the, like, the Marvel superheroes, etc. But uh, yeah. it, it does make a point about certain things that we need to maybe apply in, <laughs> in reality. Like, what do you do if a supervillain does rise up? Someone who's, like, more powerful than the police, more powerful than the army's like what do you do in that situation you send in the hulk Inter- yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> interesting interesting stuff to think about and then they really explored in the second avengers movie or, or uh no sorry uh civil war yeah yeah um, great film they really explored the whole aspect of like how much oversight do these kinds of people need these super these enhanced people that have these abilities other people don't have and it's interesting to think like if 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 uh people started popping up who had these kinds of abilities what you know, how would we respond to that what would be the right way to respond to that it makes me a little annoyed that um the movies have been playing up the whole uh you know oh they're different they're different than us then you don't get rid of them oh get rid of them uh it's just not what would happen it's just not what would happen um the minute you have somebody step forward in a country who has superpowers that person is going to be lifted up as like an idol of the country uh. and I don't know. I, I think there's going to be fear. Have you never watched the Olympics? You get, these people are going to have government uh, promoters and they're going to have big events where these people show off their strength and then the whole country is going to rally around. That's such a different level, though. You imagine if Superman shows up tomorrow in any country saying that he is a, a strong proponent of that country's constitution that country will rally behind their Superman and there will be uh, pictures of him on, you know, on every wall, in every house. There will be uh, uh, people that are that are jumping up and down, praising him. There'll be people lining up to do talk shows with him. There will also be schools running drills for duck and cover. Because if for every Superman, there's a Zod. The Superman could turn out to be a Zod. And yeah, but that, that's the fear. That's the fear of other countries. I guarantee there will be a very small minority. I don't think it would be a small minority. There would be a percentage of people of the general populace that would be suspicious and say, I don't know about this guy. There's no checks and balances in place. He's not accountable to anybody. How can we trust this guy? If there's, if it's one single hero, the minute you start having more heroes show up, then you have a, you have an immediate system of checks and balances. Also, most superheroes can still be killed with a nuclear tactical strike. 
So <laughs> yeah, them and the which and we're the, all uh, so tw- happy to do <laughs> on any given city. <laughs> yeah, destroy twelve of your own cities. So let's just leave that one there. So uh, somebody went and ported Portal over to the Hololens. What's it, uh, the they, Hololens? So Hololens is uh, an augmented reality system, uh, so which is different from virtual reality. In that virtual reality, completely, you know, you put on the headset and you're immersed in a completely digital world. Right. Augmented reality, you put on these glasses or so, or something they're that see-through, right? They're see-through, so you see the real world around you, and then uh, the software, her, you know, the the technology system adds things on top of that. Okay. How, uh, so you said it was portal being. How do you what? How do you jump through? <laughs> yeah, and come because out the I mean, I'm pretty room? sure. I'm pretty sure that if you jump, you know, if you if you use the portal gun and you shoot a portal, you're in, hitting a in wall. One wall, and then you make it a running <laughs> jump to the wall. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're gonna hit the wall. Record deaths from people playing portal on their Hololens. Some somebody tried to avoid a truck on the freeway <laughs> by by shooting a portal in the floor, and he jumped under the cement. And... <laughs> yeah, well, so there's a few bugs they're still working out. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so obviously you can't shoot a portal into your wall and walk through the portal. No. Uh, so you just move other things through the portal but that don't basically, actually exist, yeah, right? Basically, it was uh, what the de- this demo was was manipulating the companion cube, and you can toss it through the portal. Ah, uh, okay. Sort of shoot these portals uh, okay, into the real world sense. and like things like that. So it wasn't really a game. I believe it was more just of a, pr- a proof of concept. It caught my attention because Sive has has said many times that VR is not the future of gaming. It's AR that's going to be the future of gaming. Augmented reality. If if you can create a game for somebody that just integrates with your environment like that, like where this thing can see your the room you're sitting in, and uh, you can interact with the actual physical objects in your room, but like shoot portals on things, or you know, like have some kind of a game, like throw a virtual ball against the wall or something. Well, the other thing that's really, the other thing that's kind of cool with this is that you could have like digital existing tradables. Like objects or game tokens or uh, achievements or things like that that <clears throat> create a digital thing and that digital thing is on your account and then you could you could literally digitally trade it to somebody not copy it but but give it to somebody and then that digital thing is now theirs and you, you don't have it anymore that that i mean that's the whole basis behind the csgo stuff and, mm-hmm. and that, which is all crap by the way in Fallout news, the high-resolution texture pack for Fallout 4 has just been released. Uh, it's a free update on Steam that you can get. It's free DLC, actually, is what it is. It's Woo! from Bethesda. Yeah, twice as big as the game. <laughs> the te- the high-res texture pack clocks in at just about 56 gigabytes, so if you've got the hard drive space for it and you've got the Holy cow. graphics power that you can run it, there's a nice little goodie from Bethesda this week. But... Uh, yeah, Fallout 4 itself is about 30 gigs in size, so go figure. <laughs> is it good enough to make room for it? Is well, actually, that's a very like- good question. You know what? I'm just going to fire up uh, Fallout 3 or Fallout 4 right now because it just finished downloading and installing, I believe. Let me just double check that it's yeah. actually installed and I'll, I'll see if I notice a difference. Now, this could be interesting because on the actual Steam page, uh, it has crazy high minimum specs. But in the reviews I've been seeing, people are saying they've been running it without even having the minimum specs and that it's running fine. So so we'll see. From what I've seen from like comparison images online, there's there's more detail. Textures are, are sharper. How much of a difference does that actually make to your overall game experience? I don't know. But I mean, it's if you've got the 60 gigabytes to spare and uh, and and the power to run it again. I mean, why not? Right. Why not get the why not get the higher res textures? Maybe it's New Vegas 2. Maybe that's why it's so Maybe. Th- <laughs> Speaking of that... Surprise! <laughs> um, we have some news on New Vegas 2, which has been uh, something that's been rumored for a little while now, and Subsidian has managed, in his mysterious ways of info-getting, has managed to get some info. So, So let's hear it. We know a, so we know a couple of things by just sheer logic. We know that um, companies like Zenimax, who who uh, they own uh, Bethesda, they like money. Uh, strange thing about this <laughs> is that apparently big corporations and shareholders uh, like money. So so this is something to to keep in kind of at the back of your head. 
Um, now, where it kind of gets a little fidgety in with the data that's that's been leaked on this is that they claim that Obsidian is, is doing it. And I have it on, on pretty darn good authority that Obsidian does not have the time nor the manpower to work on a uh, New Vegas 2, which would not you know, which would be able to come out within this year. Is it going to be announced at, at E3 this, this summer? Um, they do. They simply do not have the manpower and they have not had the time. There are other companies who make video games and there are other companies who are very close and chummy with uh, Bethesda. So the chance that we could actually see a new uh, Fallout game, not, a, not Fallout 5, but a new continuation of you know, say New Vegas, because of its very high popularity, is actually quite high. And so this is where we, we kind of enter the, the rumor mill a little bit. I was able to confirm that Obsidian just does not have the, the time, the power, or the utilities to do this. It, well, you've convinced me. I'll do it. It would be a shock. <laughs> it would be a shock if they did, they came out with it, but I'm I'm pretty sure that that there is at least some reality behind it. Now, whether or not somebody's actually working on it or whether it was just proposed and somebody got their hand on the proposals. This is what happens in leaks sometimes. Low level guys in companies who are CC'd on an email by mistake. And um, and like nobody even really catches it. Often this is how this happens. And so this low level guy will, you know, leak it out uh, after he gets hands on, on something really, really, you know, cool. But he's only getting part of the story. He's not getting the whole thing. He's only getting like, a snippet here or a snippet there and and he kind of pieces it together or he is you know inside the company and he's he's leaking it you know just you know for whatever reason man's got a leak yeah man, man's got a leak got a, man's got a you know he's, he's got to feed that rumor mill and i feel that's kind of what has happened here um the 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 person coming out with this stuff has um has been fairly accurate before um, has been pretty dead on before, but that was with some stuff that was a little bit more well known. Um, this one, though, I think honestly that that they <clears throat> that Zinimax and Bethesda was and have been looking at doing another uh, game in the series because we just had this graphics update come out. The uh, consoles can now handle it. This is another very important mm -hmm. thing to note: is the can is the, the consoles can now actually handle these updated graphics so i think that that there's a good chance that we might see something but it, it won't be obsidian i think it'll be somebody else and i'm so i'm working very hard at trying to figure out who that might be why would they choose um new vegas 2 as opposed to uh doing something in a completely new uh setting like they typically do um america's not that big <laughs> There's other places. Uh, There's other. That's that's basically what it boils down to. Is, is America is not that big. Uh, so the original one kind of took place in the upper Midwest. Um, was the was the first Fallout. And the second Fallout kind of moved from from there. They moved uh, down into California, and then um, you've had uh, New Vegas take up a, a good chunk of uh, Nevada and um, heading a little bit into Texas area. Texas, we know, is currently occupied by uh, Caesar's Legion, um, which, as far as a as far as a storyline grouping goes, not the best kind of story to try and base one off of. It's possible. We've we've got a couple other locations, but we know uh, I have it on very good authority that um, Fallout Five will either be be New York, uh, which is probably the least likely but it is it is a good pick um because it's such an iconic city but unfortunately it was hit really really hard there's not much of new york left standing as far as the lore goes it wouldn't be, be the first time that they rewrote lore trust me but mm -hmm. uh so that that leaves that leaves a you know kind of the southeast and that's about it yeah you want somewhere with famous landmarks um, you have that in every in every game. Washington, in uh, Las Vegas, in Boston. Uh, you know, you always have you have recognizable locations. It's based on the real actual maps of these places. So an iconic city, definitely. So New York would definitely fit that bill. Um, there's got to be other cities they could pick from. You said that. You said New York's the least likely. What other what other options are there? 
probably one of the best options, and this is, I've heard this more than once, is that uh, if they do, uh, if they do do one in the in the Florida area, that it'll probably be about NASA, hmm. because that opens up that opens up the moon, which um, there was a military base on. We don't know how far along they have come, uh, but we do know that there was a battle on the moon as far as the lore goes and so that that the moon might be a key location it would make sense it's a technological hub there were lots and lots of vaults down in that area that were made so that is a very strong possibility is that uh is that 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 florida keys kind of area up up around there towards uh um, into the area where nasa is what about other parts of the world like um Australia, Europe. Well, that that's the other thing is that, um, like, so we can assume that the global nuclear war was pretty, uh, pretty concurrent over the whole globe. You know, there there hasn't been you know settlers coming in from other countries. There's been a handful yeah. of there have been a handful of characters who who have come from other places, but they have had very precious little to say about um, about key areas. We know that. Canada, especially the Toronto area, has been has got a, a, a lot of survivors, and they're a very militaristic group now, apparently, uh, which would make <laughs> which would make fair sense as far as the lore goes. Uh, we know that some part of British Europe managed to survive. We don't know how much, but we know that at least a little bit of it has. Um, aside from that, we don't have a lot of data. We know that uh, whatever happened in the in South America. Um, there isn't very many people coming up through that area anymore. So honestly, it could go global. I, I think it's a good idea, but I think gener uh, generally speaking that um, the state of the world and how and what it was in was pretty chaotic right before the, the mass war. So so we'll we'll have to see with that. Yeah. Well, I've heard I, I've heard Australia tossed around as a, as a um, yes an excellent yeah. like. Could you imagine the, the creatures they could put there? But you know what I you know what I just thought of that I think would be really neat is if if you had a follow game set in Europe, but that spanned several European cities, um, so you could travel to these different cities on like a tram system or something that lets you skip mm -hmm. over the the wasteland in between, and you'd go to so you could say go from from London to Paris and other you know the famous capitals with with landmarks and have it like span different city kind of um i guess kind of a mass effect kind of thing like where you can go to these yeah. different planets yeah but you have a central it, hub somewhere yeah it would be it would be very interesting we do know that the that mutation uh did manage to it, the mutations kind of spread um on the global winds so that we know that that there's a very good chance like that africa is filled with enormously gigantic mutated monsters like that's that's something that we can guesstimate at quite safely just because <laughs> of what the fev does to things yeah. so um my yeah my favorite video game death ever i was playing goat simulator and i was playing i was gonna ask if it was goat simulator <laughs> So. I was playing the zombie mod for Goat Simulator, and I got taken out by a freaking zombie elephant that just came out of nowhere. It was, oh, it was yeah. awesome. Yep. Yeah. With flames, right? There was yeah, flames was... involved or something. <laughs> like burned you from its trunk. Yeah, yeah that's right. So it could. So yeah, so they, flames. <laughs> it's, he was flaming. So yeah, no, there's there's so much that we can potentially look forward to and see, and I, and as I said at the beginning, is that there that for some reason corporations like money and they know that fallout sells very well i mean the uh the app game has been enormously successful let us just hope they never ever 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 sell the fallout ip to hollywood yeah, oh lord yeah. we'll get we'll get chris pratt as as the sole survivor who was <laughs> like a cybernetically enhanced yeah. marine before the great war and then there will also be Jennifer Lawrence as Piper. <laughs> Dog meat will be her little Chihuahua that, that she carries around in her purse. Like, what are they doing with the Tetris movie? How are they gonna get Act One and even Two out of that? How are they gonna get Act One out of a Tetris movie? They're gonna have to crowbar some sort of really thin plot together. To uh, how do you make a movie about Tetris? I don't like, know. I don't know. I don't know. It'll be Angry Birds I've... all over again. 
But at it's least like those pixels. are like, like yeah, like pixels. We sent like images of our our culture, our you, you know, and this included video games into outer space. For some reason, the aliens decided to copy that and come attack us. What? Wah, wah. The, yeah, I think probably the best movie was was Wreck It Ralph, and it wasn't even really based no, on that. No, it was it's no, it was key. about yeah, it was about video games. It was. It, had... it was about video gaming in general, and they had a lot of really good references, but they, in that case, they didn't take an existing lore and try and stuff it into their cookie mold. They took their cookie mold and, and then, you know, flavored it with, with, with the video gaming stuff. Right. So that's, that's the difference, I think. When you take, when you take video games and you try and cram them into, like, oh, hey, look, we've got, you know, uh, you know, we've got references to uh, Pac-Man cheats, and we've got uh, you know this, that, and the other thing. They're really being disingenuous and fake when they when they try to say, "Oh, look at our, look at this, look at that." You know, we we hit all these things. You have to like it because you like video games. So with with this Warcraft movie, did you did you check that out recently? I and I hope you didn't pay for it. I watched 23 minutes of it until it was too loud and too much CGI on the screen. It literally gave me a headache. It was just noise yeah, and visuals. Yeah, that can happen. I, I, I'm, ex I, I'm, I, I'm no longer excited to check out the rest of it. And it's long, too. I don't know if I'll get it's, through it's it. It's long, and it's... The the plot, the original plot of that story that they, they focused on, the gate opening and them coming to uh, Azeroth, the, that story was um, written back in the 90s, I think. Yeah. And it was not very well written. And the movie... I, I must say that the, the Warcraft movie handled that content very, very well. Because in the original lore, when you look at it, you're like, what the hell is going on here? And then when you look at the movie, it's you get the same reaction. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so was it sort of an origin story? Like... It, no, it, it's the it's the origin story of what started the initial like Warcraft experience. Humans versus like, see, Warcraft 1. Okay, that, see, when it comes to making a good video game movie it can I be really done. think I think it can be done and I just remembered um, uh, watching Halo forward unto dawn yeah uh, baby okay yeah there we go. I thought That's that was one. very well done and and uh -huh. there's a couple of reasons why I think it was done in such a way that it appeals to a broader audience more than just gamers mm -hmm. but it treats the source material with enough respect that people who are into Halo are really going to appreciate that as well and they'll get a deeper deeper sort of appreciation kind of like the lord they of the rings right like they didn't meddle with the source material and i think that's a what if we make the halo square mm, <laughs> hollywood surveys are saying that squares are more popular triangle um, is the strongest shape that will really yeah, resonate right. with our audience <laughs> that's i think an example of a of where it was really well done and I think one of the reasons for that is they didn't try to explain the universe. They didn't try to explain, oh, why are all these people here and all these aliens? And like, it's not like, oh, we yeah. have to go back and explain every little detail from the beginning of time to explain why this world is the way it is. You know, it's just kind of, here's the world that this movie takes place in and you just leave it at that. You just accept it. Mm hmm. Which is why, when and if the Portal movie gets made, like, I don't want some origin story about some quantum physicist in 2012 who developed some <laughs> some amazing technology that at some point in the future got turned into the Portal gun. Just give me a... Just, just give a him world, a Portal gun. Just, just world just, with just Portal guns it in it. it. Yeah, Orange, exactly. blue, I'm, we're good to go. <laughs> But yeah, instead of story. ovals, what if the portals were triangles? <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to give my impressions of the uh, the new texture pack for Fallout 4, but Fallout 4 is not loading for some reason, it's, and uh, Steam has been crashing on me all day, so something's wrong here. Anyway, this has been the Triple S Podcast. Thanks so much to Cybsidian and uh, Bad Option. On behalf of the Triple S League, we will talk to you next time. Bye. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps us out a ton when you do that. Check out this video. It's one of our favorite things that we've done so far on our channel. And here's some more stuff you might like. See the description below for links to our Sugar Bomb forum and our mods on Nexus mods. 